Greetings and welcome to the Spider McGowan Ports channel. This time, Sega Genesis. The console is in playable condition. Model number is MK163. And yes, I do have the Sega CD attachment. And we'll and you know in the next video we'll probably end up doing a uh, tear down and replace the battery in it. How about that? I think that sounds pretty good. I need to find out what battery it is inside that console so I can uh, clear the saves on it and then I can use the console for Eye of Beholder because I really want to play that game so bad right now and I have the mouse and everything for it. And I was thinking, might as well, right? So, yeah, um, the console, like I was saying, it's, it's in playable condition. I just, uh, there's something unique about this one is that there's actually a blue LED instead of a red LED. And I was watching one of my um, one of my followers on TikTok, and they powered on their console, and I was like, okay, that looks weird. Why is it red on theirs and mine's blue? So, yeah, um, now we're gonna find out why. Yeah, the console definitely needs to be soaked in some hot soapy water. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll scrub all that all off of there, and yeah, no, that, that, that has not been replaced, that is the original diode for it, look at that switch too, uh, yeah, this thing definitely needs to be cleaned and scrubbed, so I'm going to tear it down some more, and I'll get back to you. So now I'm going to work on getting the rust off of this particular um, RF shield. And I have an actual fiberglass pen. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and just scrub it all off of there with some IPA. And then after I'm all said and done, I am going to soak this as well in the sink to get any grodiness and grime off of it. And then I'll spray it entirely down. With, I'm thinking either a petroleum product, something like um, PB Blaster, something like that. Yeah, anything to get all this uh, to prevent it from, you know, corroding again. And I just want to try to get it down to bare metal again. If I have to, I can go and get some uh, sandpaper as well to really buff this out. It's working very well. So yeah, I'm gonna go over this entire panel. You know, go top to bottom, see if there's any other pieces in really bad spots in here to uh, to hit and touch up. And yeah, so I'll get back to you guys in a little bit. And when I show the next thing, it's gonna be the actual, um, yeah, the actual motherboard. This even needs to be scrubbed and cleaned. And I'll probably hit these up too with a. And the electric eraser. See y'all in a little bit. So I put some acrylic coating over the areas in which it was rusting out. I got all the uh, corrosion off of it. And all I used was some leftover fingernail polish. Some the uh, acrylic top coat. No chip. Works really, really well. I mean, I have conformal coating, but I, I figured might as well use that stuff when it comes to something like this. I mean, it's just an RF shield. It's nothing that it's, it's not the actual PCB. If it was the PCB that needed issues or had problems with it, I would use the conformal coating. But for right now, that works really well. Cool. All right, so we are done with that. Now we're going to work on pulling 
the board out of here. I'm going to do cleaning all around in here. Yeah, it's going to have some scrubbing to do on this one. That's going to be fun. <laughs> Alright, I'm just going to take these two screws out right here and I'll pull the board out and I'll just uh, soak the shell. Alright, see you guys in a little bit. Yeah, upon further inspection, I am so glad that I took this apart because, man, I mean, look at that. Yeah, this has to be probably by far the most gnarly console I owned. <laughs> Alright, see you in a little bit. This is a little bit still a little bit damp, but yeah, everything cleaned up nicely, scrubbed it all clean. Put some acrylic down on the rusting out spots. Still got to do a little bit of acrylic in here. But yeah, what a dramatic difference that is just soaking it in the sink and scrubbing it up. You got a little bit of cleaning in there you have to do. But, let's... Alright, so we got a bunch of scrubbing all done up in here. Got all that all polished up. Labels didn't even come off, even though I soaked it in the sink, which is outstanding. RF shields are all taken care of. This one's got some acrylic on it. And yeah, a lot of scuff and wear and tear on this particular model, but that's all done. Now we're going to work on the board. We are going to use the electric eraser along these contacts, those contact pads, but I think I'm going to concentrate mainly in this area right in here, because this looks really, really gnarly. I'm, I'm sure it's just dirt and grime, and I'll just be using a bunch of uh, rubbing alcohol and a bunch of cotton swabs. Remember when you're working with any of these things to wear your safety glasses? Yep. Oh, safety glasses. Man, I should have gotten to this a long time ago. My apologies, people, for allowing this console to be this gross and then playing games on it. You know, I usually take care of my, I would say, my cartridges better than this, even. But, like I said, I was working on one console set at a time. I was really working on the Nintendo. And this stuff kind of just got left up in the cabinet. I'm going to spin to the side so you can see what I'm doing here just to keep my hand from getting in the way. Because I have to see this off camera. I can't be, I can't look at it while I'm working on it. Through the viewfinder. That depth is really, really off. So yeah, no, that's a, it looks like it's a stock LED for it. I mean, if anybody else is taking apart their console, please tell me and let me know. This almost looks like a cap went, but no, this is just gross. I bought this from a, um, a shop here in town. This isn't, this isn't my original stuff. My original stuff is the Nomad. That, that, that was my original. But this, this, this is probably one of the more grownier of my consoles. And don't worry, I'll be washing my hands. I could wear gloves right now, but, eh. I'm 
I'm not I'm not getting my hands into it. Y'all tell me how your day is going because mine is going absolutely incredible. I mean, getting to take apart a Sega Genesis, that's awesome. Give me a second. with these wires getting in the way right now. I'll probably spray this switch with some deoxid too. Like I was saying down in the comments section, go ahead and tell me how your day is going. And when was the last time you guys had a chance to play a Sega Genesis game? Emulation counts, it's all good. I just had a really good time playing that uh, Altered Beast, had a good laugh on that one. Something about the way they die in that game, it just, it's comical for me. I get a really good chuckle out of it. I'm sorry, I was working on something that you guys didn't see. I still can't believe that the, uh, the Nomad, the Sega Nomad, is... A portable one of these consoles. This is that's just incredible to have a sixteen bit console. And having it portable back you know, back then when it was actually relevant. Sega like had a lot of things before their time and It's just awesome. I mean, even the Dreamcast alone was way before its time. Weren't they boasting that it was a 128? bit system. During the console wars. I believe I, I heard that one time before. Another really great game that I remember when I was a kid playing this console. I mean, outside of Sonic, and that was a given. And not through the Nomad, no, no. That's that's those are tales entirely different for for gameplay back in the day for me. Um, for this console, though, I um, yeah, 
I rented it, of course, for the Sega CD and played Dragon's Lair on it, and that was the first time I was ever actually introduced to the game of Dragon's Lair. And this console also introduced me to the Wanderers from Wise, or Wise, which was awesome. Broken up and get it out of here. Yeah, the, the Wanderers from Yees. I've I have that cartridge and I'm, I'm going to clean it here in a couple days. That one really impresses me. It's from one of my favorite publishers of video games too. And Falcom? I believe I said that right. Sorry if I missed anything on, on filming any of that. It's just, I'm gonna get pro progress going here. You know, some of this stuff is gonna be a little bit of continuation. You know, like a bunch of work here and there. I might have to do some of it off camera too. before me was one hairy, hairy person. Ugh. Bring it down so you can see the picture. Yeah, tonight I wasn't expecting to do this. I was just... I was just thinking about it. But then I decided to go ahead and start working on this console because I saw it sitting on my computer desk after playing it a few times and I was like yeah I think my Genesis needs some TLC sure enough as soon as I opened it up I was just like oh and y'all saw it Played a lot. Sorry about my reach there. Was uh, Warlock on this console? I couldn't get very far. Yeah, it's one of those brutal hard games. But for the amount of time that I played it as, it was fun. I like the Warlock series with Jillian's hands. on this console was, was that Might and Magic Gates to Another World. I spent months playing that game. And I never 
beat it. It's one of those games that I just don't ever feel like I was ever gonna ever attempt to beat it. Like, I know there's a way to do it, and it's for each class of character that you're gonna play. But, yeah. I just never felt like actually beating the game. I, I spent more time just sitting there grinding on it and farming experience points for my characters and leveling them up. And then I found the absolute best creature to to exterminate. You know, again and again every time I turn the game on. And that was the, um, the death in the box. If you've ever played the game, you'd know what I'm talking about on that. Before that, it was Cuisinart's. So you can get your, uh, your sword spell, your dancing sword spell. Yeah, but as I was introduced to the Sega CD by renting it with that Dragon's Lair. Oh, sorry about bumping the camera there. Yeah, with that Dragon's Lair, I'm telling you, man, it, it was. I laughed so hard. Hearing, was it Dirk the Daring? Um, <laughs> when I heard him squeal when he was on the horse, on the flying horse, you know, even Family Guy makes fun of that, where he does that. Or when he dies there. And I was like, that was the most hilarious sound effect I've ever heard a cartoon character ever make. Because he would kind of squeal as he would get his rump roasted. <laughs> oh, this is so therapeutic, everyone. Inspecting these trace lines and all that and for, for me, this is art. So when I when I see this, I'm like, yeah, that's that's impressive. All right, give me one second. I'm gonna clean up real quick. All right, I'm back. So what I'm gonna do now? Clean up the eraser. I'm gonna go along the contact pads after I clean it first. I want to make sure that this is all. polished, gray free. It's usually the uh, the material that gets between the contact pads that I'm usually having the most problems with. And see that's just from going in and insertion of the Sega CD. And all that adds up over the time of using it. I'll try to get you guys better on camera here. I'm covering up the entire board so that I don't get any eraser media up onto the actual board I just cleaned. <laughs> just, just thinking ahead, man. Okay, let's go ahead and dry it off. I'm going to go lightly over this. And of course I'll get the other side too. And this one's to collect all the extra. See that? 
what that's doing is it's rolling along it and collecting it all up inside of itself to get all that extra dirt and grime. Uh, notably, it's uh, verdigris or tarnish. And this will help improve the performance of these contact pads for the uh, Sega CD. And that Sega CD unit works wonderful. Okay. That worked out very well. Alright, I'm going to clean up. And I'll flip the board over and we'll work on the other side. I've done this to every console. I've done this to all my cartridges as well. Three part or four part step where you wipe it down first with rubbing alcohol and then you eraser and then a more abrasive eraser and then you get all the rest of the media off of the board. This. That looks really good. Yeah, those turned out really nice. Okay. Alright, here's the other side. And this is the reason why we clean it. I won't have to uh, re-solder those joints for the power. May clean it up a little bit to get that flux off there. But yeah. Hope you all are enjoying watching this. In my previous video, the uh, Sega Genesis and the controller, the 8 bit toe controller, was it the M30? The Bluetooth one. Yeah, I, I, um, I neglected to hook it up to the PC and, and use an emulator and play it that way. My apologies. But it does work very well. I mean, oh, it's such a such a relief playing games now that you would you, you'd assume that okay, your controller is going to be getting in the way. You like, like, dang it! <laughs> Why did my controller have to be such junk? And when you play with an eight bit controller or a um, other company's controller that that makes these wireless ones uh, it, it's just a difference between night and day it it's really really impressive I love it having a wireless Bluetooth or a wireless uh, 2.5 G controller I was over here I'm when you hear me do that I'm just cleaning off the tip so that it's not Re introducing the grime from the previous time of working on it. There we go. And yes, I'm wearing safety glasses while doing this because you really do not want the eraser media getting up and into your eye.
is gnarly. This so needed to get cleaned. Yeah, in the description box below, I will, uh, I'll thank my, uh, TikTok followers and those whom I follow as well, uh, the gaming side of things, for inspiring me to, uh, tear this console apart, take a look at it, find out why that LED is different, because it's a blue LED, it's not supposed to be blue. I'm going to turn it on, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let me put it in there. Another game in there. I might clean another game too. Before I actually put it in another console, but it might be just Altered Beast again, because I know that card is actually 100% issue free. I'm gonna clean up. Yeah, upon further ins uh, inspection, somebody did mod this console. I could see where they did it. I'll show you here in a little bit. I just want to make sure we get all this taken care of here. So that way you can see what the results are. Um, if you tear apart your Nintendo, the Nintendo will have this type header on it too, with the contact pads, outside of the actual um, cartridge sleeve slot, the socket. You can pull that socket off and then clean this whole area off as well and do the same steps. And huh, the reliability, you will not believe the difference. It's a dramatic difference of cleaning these off. I mean, sure, you can get a, a new um, cartridge Yeah, you know what to call socket. Get a new socket. Yeah, one of these right here. You can get a new one of those, but yeah, it's not going to make any. Won't make any difference if the contact pads are not nice and clean. But yeah, look at that. Look what somebody did. I didn't do this. You know me. I would claim that I did it. But look at those traces, too. Ugh. Okay. Give me one second here. I know I damaged PCBs too over the time frame of working on this stuff, but I've never done anything like that. It looks like the solder joints are actually together, and it looks like that's some really, really cheap solder. Yeah, I, I'm going to definitely turn on the HACO. Give me one second. I have it all up and running now. You know, here's the conformal coating that I was referring to. Focus on it. I'm sure you guys got it now, right? There you go. And what I'm going to use is I'm just going to use a toothpick and I'm going to go over this whole area right here with it just to make sure that it's all covered up. And, um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to redo that. Put some flux down real quick. I was thinking of pulling that old solder off of there first. And use a solder wick on it. Yeah, I'm not kidding. You need that much. It, it really takes a lot of flux at, at times. And with that, it looks like that kind of solder too, that it's the, um, that type of temperature one. 
because that looks like a, um, a cold solder joint. Because you can see the warm ones, they, like these are good solder joint and these are cold. They just don't look right. They don't have that ooh, shiny top on them. I've had other components that did that to me too and uh, figured out uh, how to work my my um, my Heiko. I'll do a review on that too of how to reset and how to uh, balance or however whatever they want to call it. Was it zero in your temperature to reset it? There's a way on the uh, the Heiko to uh, actually do that. Okay, let's see here now. What do we want to do? We want to clean this off first. At least I know that this is working very well. Before I had to have it at a really high temperature and that this did not want to work at all. There we go. Does that look better? That looks way better, doesn't it? This one looks like it needs just a little bit more. There we go. Oh, sorry about bumping the camera, but that's all I needed. Oh, God. I thought for sure it was going to be a, a stubborn, stubborn component, again, like we've been having problems with. Um, should I should I leave the uh, iron on and then actually touch up the uh, power supply? I don't think that that's going to need to be done at all. It looks really good. I'm not having any intermediate, uh, intermittent problems with it. Yeah, that temperature on that was way lower than what I have had to have it as. Super, super happy. I didn't even have to redo the uh, solder at all either. Nice. That came in. Major hand. Could have asked for a better outcome. Alright. Give me one second here. I was like, yeah, never underestimate the power of using flux. Conformal coating has some seriously high Volk levels, so definitely use this stuff, I would say sparingly, and in a well-ventilated area. Just to get that leftover flux that's sitting on the board right here. 
me out of here. Let me just tidy it up a little bit. Yeah, you see that? That's a really, really nice solder joint too. Yeah, there's no way that that's going to be breaking free from the board at all. Interesting that they had a cable coming across there like that, though. Okay, let's go back out again. A little bit of dirt for this standoff is that, or grommet. There's another spot in here too that I know that's pretty gnarly that I should touch up. Right here. Thought there was another one. Wonderful. That's definitely a job well done. Super happy with that turning out as well as it did. Yeah, like I said, I never underestimate the power of using that flux. Plenty of it. And make sure that your soldering iron is at the proper temperature and you're good to go. Okay, so that does need to be hit up again. Just Yeah, that's that sticky stuff that was on the board before. I mean, in the shell. And the soda got dumped inside of it. Oh yeah, it's spreading all over the place. I'm going to clean it all up the rest of the way. But, yeah, uh, give me a second, you guys. I'm going to go ahead and turn the console on and get it all put together. and We'll play a quick game. Sega Genesis, all polished up. Still have to put a couple screws into her yet. But, yeah. Let's go test it out on the TV. Play a quick game on it. See you in a little bit.
Cool. That baseball bat is brutal. <laughs> well, thank you all so very much for watching. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Be healthy, stay safe, and happy gaming.